Here beginneth the treatise of the boyhood of Jesus, according to Thomas. When Jesus was five years old, he took of the clay of a fish pond and made of it twelve sparrows. And it was the Sabbath when Jesus did this amongst the boys of the Jews. And the boys of the Jews went away and said to Joseph his father, Behold, thy son was playing along with us. And he took clay and made sparrows, which it was not lawful to do on the Sabbath, and he has broken it. And Joseph went along to the boy Jesus and said to him, Why hast thou done this? And Jesus opened his hands and ordered the sparrows, saying, Go up into the air and fly, nobody shall kill you. But a Pharisee, who was with Jesus, took an olive branch and began to let the water out of the fountain which Jesus had made. And when Jesus saw this, he said to him in a rage, Thou impious and ignorant sodomite, what harm have my works the fountains of water done thee? Behold, thou shalt become like a dry tree, having neither roots nor leaves nor fruit. And immediately he dried up and fell to the ground and died. And his parents took him away dead, and reproached Joseph, saying, See what thy son has done. Teach him to pray, not to blaspheme. And a few days after, as Jesus was walking through the town with Joseph, one of the children ran up and struck Jesus on the arm. And Jesus said to him, So thou shalt not finish thy journey. And immediately he fell to the ground and died. And those who saw these wonderful things cried out to Joseph, it is not right for such a boy to be among us. And Joseph went and brought him, and they said to him, Go away from this place, but if thou must live with us, teach him to pray and not to blaspheme. Our children have been killed. Joseph called Jesus and reproved him, saying, Why dost thou blaspheme? For these people who live here hate us. And Jesus said, I know that these words are not mine, but thine. But I will hold my tongue for thy sake and let them see to it in their wisdom. And immediately those who were speaking against Jesus became blind. And Joseph, seeing what Jesus had done, in a fury seized him by the ear. And Jesus said to Joseph in anger, It is enough for thee to see me, not to touch me, for thou knowest not who I am. But if thou didst know, thou wouldst not make me angry. And although just now I am with thee, I was made before thee. One day, when Jesus was climbing on a certain house along with the children, he began to play with them. And one of the boys fell down through a back door and died immediately. And when the children saw this, they all ran away. But Jesus remained in the house. And when the parents of the boy who had died had come, they spoke against Jesus. Surely it was him that made him fall down, and they reviled him. And Jesus, coming down from the house, stood over the dead child and with a loud voice called out the name of the child. Sinu, Sinu, rise and say whether it was I that made thee fall down. And suddenly he rose up and said, No, my Lord. And his parents, seeing such a great miracle done by Jesus, glorified God and adored Jesus. And Joseph, seeing that he had such favor and that he was increasing in stature, thought it right to take him to learn his letters. And he handed him over to another teacher to be taught. But Jesus was silent and made him no answer. Jesus said to the master, If thou art indeed a master, and if indeed thou knowest the letters, tell me the power of the A, and I shall tell thee the power of the B. Then his master was filled with fury and struck him on the head. And Jesus was angry and cursed him, and suddenly he fell down and died. And Jesus returned home, and Joseph gave orders to Mary, his mother, not to let him go out of the court of the house. And Jesus himself turned unto the Jews and said to them, Now let all them that see not see, and let them understand which understand not, and let the deaf hear, and let them arise which have died by my means. And when the child Jesus ceased speaking, all the afflicted were made whole, as many as had been afflicted by his word. And they durst not speak to him, and no man after that durst provoke him, lest he should curse him and he should be maimed. When did Jesus get his beard? Early Roman images of Jesus portray him as clean-shaven, but imagery quickly adopted the bearded look. Facial hair has gone in and out of fashion for millennia, but having a nice clean shave definitely feels and looks great. 
Henson razors have been kind enough to support this video, and their razors are the best on the market. In 2020, Henson switched from making aerospace parts, including for the actual International Space Station, and took that precision, expertise, and need for perfection into the world of razors. These are space razors, and they feel great. In fact, they've convinced me to switch from using my terrible electric razor, and I feel much better for it. It's a nice habit to get into and a great refreshing way to start the day. They're also totally plastic-free and should last for decades. And in the long term, because they basically never break, they should save you loads of money. Also, the blades are only 10 cents and you can get them easily on Amazon, meaning that it's barely $5 a year to maintain. Click on the link in the description to get 100 free blades with the purchase of a razor and start having a nice, smooth face. Thanks to Henson for supporting history content on YouTube. And Joseph rose up and said to Annas and Caiaphas, Truly and well do you wonder, since you have heard that Jesus has been seen alive from the dead. But it is more to be wondered at that he is not the only one who has risen from the dead. And hear me now, for we all know the blessed Simon, the great priest, and Simon himself had two sons. Go, therefore, and see their tombs, for they are open, because they have risen. And indeed they are as silent as the dead. But come, let us go to them, let us conduct them to us with all honour and respect. Perhaps they will speak to us of the mystery of the resurrection. Walking into the city of Arimathea, they found them there, on their bended knees and spending their time in prayer. They said, Do you believe that it was Jesus who raised you from the dead? Tell us how you have risen from the dead. Hearing this adjuration, they trembled in their body and groaned, being disturbed in heart. And together they looked towards heaven, and with their fingers made the sign of the cross on their tongues, and immediately they spoke together, saying, Give each of us sheets of paper, and let us write what we have seen and heard. And they gave it to them, and they sat down, and each of them wrote, saying, When we were, along with our fathers, lying in the deep, in the blackness of darkness, suddenly there appeared a golden heat of the sun, and immediately the father of all the human race, with all the patriarchs and prophets, exulted, saying, That light is the source of eternal light. Now it has come and shone upon us, sitting in death. And when all the saints were exulting, lo, Satan, the prince and leader of death, said to Hades, Make thyself ready to receive Jesus, who boasts himself to be the Son of God and is a man fearing death. And he has withstood me much, doing me evil, and many whom I made blind, lame, deaf, leprous, and demonic, he has healed with a word, and those whom I have brought to thee dead, he has dragged away from thee. Hades, answering, said to Prince Satan, Who is he that is so powerful, when he is a man in fear of death? For all the powerful of the earth are kept in subjection by my power. If then thou art powerful, what is that man Jesus like, who, though fearing death, withstands thy power? And as Prince Satan and Hades were thus speaking to each other in turn, suddenly there was a voice as of thunders and a shouting of spirits, Lift up your gates, ye princes, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting gates, and the King of glory shall come in. And all the multitude of the saints, hearing this, said to Hades, with the voice of reproach, Open thy gates, that the King of glory may come in. When this was seen by Hades and Death, and their impious officers, along with their cruel servants, they trembled at perceiving in their own dominions the clearness of so great a light. When they saw Christ suddenly in their abodes, and they cried out, saying, We have been overcome by thee. Who art thou? Then the King of Glory, trampling on death by his majesty and seizing Prince Satan, delivered him to the power of Hades and drew Adam to his brightness. These are the divine and sacred mysteries which we saw and heard. More we are not allowed to tell other than the mysteries of God. As Michael the Archangel adjured us and said, You shall go into Jerusalem with your brethren and continue in prayers. And with none of the men shall you speak and you shall sit as if dumb until the hour shall come when the Lord himself shall permit you to relate the mysteries of his divinity.
This is the secret message of judgement Jesus spoke with Judas Iscariot over a period of eight days, three days before he celebrated Passover. One day he was with his disciples in Judea. He found them sitting together practising their piety. When he came up to his disciples, sitting together, praying over the bread, he laughed. The disciples said to him, Master, why are you laughing at our prayer? What have we done? This is what's right. He answered and said to them, I'm not laughing at you. You're not doing this because you want to, but because through this your God will be praised. They said, Master, you are the Son of our God. Jesus said to them, How do you know me? Truly, I say to you, no generation of the people among you will know me. When his disciples heard this, they started to get angry and furious and started to curse him in their hearts. But when Jesus noticed their ignorance, he said to them, If any of you is strong enough among humans to bring out the perfect humanity, stand up and face me. All of them said, We're strong enough, but their spirits weren't brave enough to stand before him, except Judas Iscariot. He was able to stand before him, but he couldn't look him in the eye, so he looked away. Judas said to him, I know who you are and where you're from. I'm not worthy to utter the name of the one who has sent you. Then Jesus, knowing that he was thinking about what's exalted, said to him, Come away from the others, and I'll tell you the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus said, The souls of every human generation will die. However, when these people have completed their time in the kingdom and the spirit leaves them, their bodies will die, but their souls will live, and they'll be taken up. Judas said, What will the rest of the human generations do? Jesus said, It's not possible to sow on rock and harvest its fruit. In the same way, it's not possible to sow on the defiled race, along with the perishable wisdom and the hand which created mortal humans, so that their souls may go up to the realms above. Truly, I say to you, no ruler, angel or power will be able to see the places that this great, holy generation will see. Jesus said, Come, and I'll teach you about the mysteries that no human will see, because there exists a great and boundless realm, whose horizons no angelic generation has seen, in which a great, invisible spirit, which no angelic eye has ever seen, no heart has ever comprehended, and it's never been called by any name. And a luminous cloud appeared there, and the spirit said, Let an angel come into being to attend me. Judas said to Jesus, does the human spirit die? Jesus said, This is how it is. God commanded Michael to loan spirits to people so that they might serve. Then the Great One commanded Gabriel to give spirits to the great generation with no king. The spirit along with the soul. Then God caused knowledge to be brought to Adam and those with him so that the kings of chaos and Hades might not rule over them. Then Judas said to Jesus, What will those do who you've baptized in your name? Jesus said, Truly I say to you, this baptism which they've received in my name will destroy the whole generation of the earthly Adam. Tomorrow they'll torture the one who bears me, but you'll do more than all of them, because you'll sacrifice the human who bears me. Your horn has already been raised, your anger has been kindled, your star has ascended, and your heart has strayed. Look, you've been told everything. Lift up your eyes and see the cloud with the light in it and the stars around it. And the star that leads the way is your star. Then Judas looked up and saw the luminous cloud, and he entered it. And Judas didn't see Jesus anymore. Some scribes were there watching closely so they could arrest him during his prayer, because they were afraid of the people since they all regarded him as a prophet. And they approached Judas and said to him, What are you doing here? Aren't you Jesus' disciple? Then he answered them as they wished. Then Judas received some money and handed him over to them. In the consulate of Theodosius Augustus the Younger, a certain honourable young man then dwelling at Tarsus in the house which had been the house of St Paul, an angel appeared unto him by night and gave him a revelation saying that he should break up the foundation of the house and publish that which he found. And he dug and found a box of marble inscribed upon the sides. Therein was the revelation of St. Paul, and there was written therein as follows. The angel said unto me, 
Follow me, and I will show thee the place of the righteous, where they are taken, when they are dead. And thereafter will I take thee to the bottomless pit, and show thee the souls of the sinners, into what manner of place they are taken, when they are dead. I went with the angel of the Lord, and looked before me, and saw a place through which passed thousands, and thousands, and myriads, and myriads of angels, whose faces were as of panthers, and their teeth stuck forth out of their mouth, and their eyes were bloodshot, and their hair loose like woman's hair, and burning scourges were in their hands. I feared, and asked, Who are these? The angel answered, These are the ministers of the whole creation which come unto the souls of the ungodly, and take them, and lay them down here. They fly three days with them in the air, before they take them and cast them into the everlasting torment. After I looked into the height, and beheld other angels, whose faces shone like the sun, and their loins were girt with golden girdles, holding palms in their hands, and the sign of God, full of all gentleness and mercy. And I asked the angel, and said, who are these, Lord, that are of so great beauty and compassion? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the angels of righteousness, that are sent to bring the souls of the righteous in the hour of necessity. And I said unto the angel, I would see the souls of the righteous and of the sinners as they depart out of the world. And the angel answered and said unto me, Look down upon the earth. And I looked, and I saw a great cloud of fire spread over the whole world. And I sighed, and I wept. And the angel said, Hast thou perceived all these things? And I said, Yes, Lord. And he said unto me, Follow me again, and I will take thee, and show thee the places of the righteous. And he brought me down from the third heaven, and led me into the second heaven. And from the firmament he led me unto the gates of heaven. And I looked around that land, and saw a river flowing with milk and honey. And the trees were full of fruits from the root, even to the upper branches, and there were ten thousand dates in each cluster. And he said unto me, Come, follow me, and I will show thee the souls of the ungodly and the sinners, that thou mayest know what manner of place they have. And I saw there a river of fire burning with heat, and in it was a multitude of men and women sunk up to their knees, and other men up to the navel, others also up to the lips, and others up to the hair. And I asked the angel, and said, Lord, who are these that are sunk up to their knees in the fire? He answered and said unto me, These are they which, when they come out of the church, occupy themselves in disputing with idle talk. But these that are sunk up to the navel are they who, when they have received the body and blood of Christ, go and commit fornication and do not cease from their sins until they died. And they that are sunk up to their lips are they that slandered one another when they gathered in the church of God, but those that are sunk up to their eyebrows are they that beckon to one another and privately devise evil against their neighbours. And I saw another man in the river of fire sunk up to his knees, and his hands were stretched out and bloody, and worms issued out of his mouth and nostrils, and he was groaning and lamenting and crying out, and said, Have mercy on me, for I suffer hurt more than the rest that are in this torment. And I asked, Who is this, Lord? And he said unto me, This whom thou seest was a deacon, who devoured the offerings and committed fornication, and did not write in the sight of God. Therefore, without ceasing, he payeth the penalty. And I looked and saw beside him another man, and the angel over him having a great razor red hot, and therewith he cut the lips of that man and the tongue likewise. And I sighed and I wept and I asked, Who is this man, Lord? And he said to me, This that thou seest was a reader and read unto the people, but he kept not the commandments of God. Now also he payeth his own penalty. And again I beheld there men and women with their hands and feet cut off and naked in a place of ice and snow, and worms devoured them. And when I saw it, I wept and asked, Who are these, Lord? And he said unto me, These are they that injured the fatherless and widows and the poor, and trusted not in the Lord. And thereafter I saw men and women clad in rags, full of pitch and brimstone of fire, 
and there were dragons twined about their necks and shoulders and feet, and angels having horns of fire constrained them and smote them and closed up their nostrils. And I sighed, and I wept and said, Woe unto men, woe unto the sinners. And I asked, and I said, Lord, who are they that are in this place? And he said unto me, These are they which say that Christ rose not from the dead, and that this flesh riseth not again. And I inquired and said, Lord, is there no fire or heat in this place? And he said unto me, In this place is nothing else but cold and snow. And thereafter I saw the Son of God coming down out of heaven, and on his head was a crown. And when they that were in torment saw him, they all cried out with one voice, saying, Have mercy upon us, O exalted Son of God. And the Son of God said, What good works have ye done, that ye should ask of me refreshment? My blood was shed for you, and not even so did ye repent. For your sake I bear a crown of thorns on mine head, for you I received buffets upon my cheeks, and not even so did ye repent. Yet now, because of Michael, the archangel of my covenant, and the angels that are with him, and because of Paul, my dearly beloved, and because of your brethren that are in the world and do offer oblations, and because of your sons, for in them are my commandments, and yet more, because of mine own goodness, on that day, whereon I rose from the dead, I grant unto all of you that are in torment, refreshment for a day and a night forever. And all there cried out and said, We bless thee, O Son of God, for that thou hast granted us rest for a day and a night. And as they thus spake, the angels of torment and the evil angels were wroth with them and said, How long have ye wept and sighed, and yet have ye received this great grace, even refreshment for the night and day of the Lord's day, because of Paul, the dearly beloved of God, who hath come down unto you. And after these things, the angel said unto me, Hast thou seen all these things? And I said, Yes, Lord.